All right. Oh, hello, everyone. It is Nigel here once again, and I have got another wrestling review for you guys today. So, today's review is going to be John Cena versus CM Punk at Money in the Bank 2011 for the WWE Championship. Now, uh, for starters, of course, as always, I am not professional, not professional wrestling analyst or professional wrestling reviewer, just a man who enjoys a good time, and I definitely, for the most part, had a good time watching this match. Now, the thing about this match is, it's less of a match and more of a story, if that makes sense. Uh, in terms of physicality and wrestling moves and everything uh, between Cena and uh, CM Punk, uh, obviously, it's still a really solid match in that regard, but... Uh, the story and the storyline leading up to it and the story that was told throughout the match is what really shines here the most when it comes to this match. So, uh, of course, we're going to get into that. But uh, I, uh, I decided I wanted to do this match because it is the 20th anniversary of John Cena being in the WWE. His 20th anniversary was on uh, Monday. And so they did a tribute for him on Raw. They did like videos, and uh, he got to do like a promo and stuff like that. Pretty much a tribute night to John Cena and everything. And I figured, why not celebrate in my own way by watching arguably one of his best matches by a lot of people's admission. Now, and I think this is the only match in John Cena's career, if I'm not mistaken, to receive a five-star rating from Dave Meltzer, which, uh, take his reviews with a grain of salt, but, um, be as may, that's, that's that, so, um, yeah, yeah, and, uh, I gotta be honest, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, hey, please don't hate me for this, okay, this is my first time watching this match, I know, I, I know, it's bad, it's bad, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm bad, but, uh, thing is, this match has been around for a while, obviously. Hey, this took place in 2011, which was 11 years ago. So, the fact that I haven't gotten around to watching this match yet, uh, it, there's no excuse. But I'm glad I was able to watch the match, and not just for the review, but also for my own sake and everything. Why have I not watched this match yet before today? Uh, I couldn't really tell you. Just haven't really done it, but... Uh, I'm watching this match here, here, and I'm glad I was able to catch it. So, uh, of course, for those of you who have seen the reviews and everything already, you kind of already know how this goes. We're going to be doing my, uh, we're going to do pros and cons, what I liked, what I didn't like about the match and everything. So, uh, let's get into it right off the bat with what I liked about the match. Like I said, uh, good back and forth between the two. Uh, although there are some contrasting styles between uh, John Cena and CM Punk, John Cena is more like strength and base and everything. Meanwhile, CM Punk is a bit more technical, oh, and he's got good strikes and everything. Uh, they do work really well here, and they do have a good chemistry about them. And in this match, they're able to uh, really work well with each other, and they definitely have good chemistry and. Uh, their styles complement each other very well, and for the most part, it's a very evenly paced match with uh, uh, CM Punk getting shots in, John Cena getting shots in, and uh, and uh, it was able to be pretty balanced. They both got pretty much equal amounts of offense in, which I thought was really, really good. But the story, is, like I said, the story is where the match really shines. So up to this point, CM Punk has made it clear he has not resigned with WWE yet, and he may be on his way out, and he vowed to leave Chicago as WWE Champion. So up to this point, CM Punk, Punk has done uh, not just feuding with Cena and everything, but also he's done the pipe bomb promo where he sat down and spoke his mind and everything. And so CM Punk's getting a lot of popularity. He's, he vowed, at least in storyline, to walk out of Chicago with the WWE Championship because uh, Money in the Bank was taking place in the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. So CM Punk vowed to walk out. And then that night, at the stroke of midnight, he will be a free agent. He did not resign with WWE, so he is a free agent. He's going to be walking out. And, um, 
Yeah, it's definitely ev evidence. Just from the entrances, because the entrance for CM Punk, he gets a cheer, the crowd on their feet, you know, CM Punk chants and everything. But when John Cena comes out, booze, just booze, rains down upon him by the Chicago crowd. I think the only the only event where Cena got booed more was at ECW One Night Stand in 2006. But other than that, they booed the crap out of Cena. He was hated here. And it's partially for a couple reasons, because it, it was like pro CM Punk, but also kind of anti Cena. And this is a story they worked really well, where John Cena was like the company man, he's like uh, the top star, the favorite and everything, but CM Punk is more like the people's champion in a way, which is kind of ironic, because he would take on The Rock later on. But CM Punk kind of like for the people, he's the underdog, he's the guy who was overlooked for a lot of time and he mentioned his, his pipe bomb promo oh, and uh, he mentioned how he was always passed over and uh, how you know, people were buying the the pay-per-view events that his face wasn't on the cover on but John Cena got like everything and John Cena was like the favorite and everything and and yeah so it all came to a head here and throughout the match we see he, uh, as they're evenly matched, CM Punk, Punk, in a lot of ways, he's combating John Cena and moments where it looks like he's winning the match and everything, which he does. He actually leaves. He wins the WWE Championship. He makes good on his promise, and he leaves the WWE with the title, even though Vince McMahon tried to interfere, or, uh, Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis. And I do, and another wrinkle to the story, where Cena, as Laurinaitis is coming up, Cena Dex Laurinaitis. He doesn't want John Laurinaitis interfering in the match. I do like that about how Cena here, how he says he wants to win the legit way. It's not like John Cena broke character and just let John Laurinaitis screw CM Punk out of the title and everything. Cena, uh, he's like the goody goody. He uh, wants to win the legit way, and it does end up costing him. But uh, yeah, so oh, uh, CM Punk does end up leaving, and he's gone from the WWE. He, for a while, for I think like a couple months or so. Oh, and in the meantime, Cena's like interim champion. He won it after challenging Rey Mysterio an hour after Rey Mysterio won the WWE Championship. Even as a kid, that made me mad. And Rey Mysterio, for those of you who know, Rey Mysterio is one of my absolute favorite wrestlers. And so when he won the WWE Championship, I was happy. I was excited. Just to lose it an hour later to John Cena? Why? What was the point? What was the point of having Ray win the title if he was just gonna drop it back to Cena? Uh, and then, what was the point of uh, John Cena uh, challenging Ray that same night? Hey, what what the heck, man? Why why did John Cena challenge Ray that same night and take the title off of him? Um, I, and I get they wanted to have a rematch between John and CM Punk, but you probably could have uh, went about it a different way, or just have John win the title outright instead of winning it off of Ray an hour after Ray already competed to win the championship. That never sat well with me. And honestly, I think Ray versus Punk would have made it for a much better story because there is some prior history between Ray and Punk. Uh, the previous year they feuded. Uh, of course, when Ray was like battling the Straight Edge Society and everything, and shaved CM Punk's head, so I think it would have worked in that regard. But uh, Lol Cena wins <laughs> was the thing, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, but the story of the match and everything surrounding it, it uh, I think, is what amplified it and took it to the next level, and what really made the match stand out and have an identity because it feels like all these stakes are on the line which it they kind of were and they brought up that uh john cena uh, pretty much if he lost the title was leaving wwe cm punk was leaving with the title and so uh, they brought up the legacy of the WWE championship those who have held it before and how that would pretty much be thrown out the window with cm punk leaving with the title now realistically CM Punk actually winning and leaving with the title is probably an indication that, okay, CM Punk either did resign or is going to resign because, realistically, if CM Punk truly didn't resign and never came back, which he would end up doing in 2014, but if CM Punk won 
and, and never came back. That means your top title is just gone. Uh, it's with him. You gotta have a whole new championship, and I doubt WWE is gonna do that. And, but uh, yeah, so it was kind of an indication that CM Punk was gonna be back and everything. I think, I think the only time, the only other time I can think of where or someone left with the title was when Taz left for WWE while he was ECW champion, which gave us the moment of Taz versus Mike Awesome, a WCW guy challenging and only a WWE guy for the ECW championship. But uh, look what happened to ECW. But uh, but uh, yeah. So while it was kind of an indicator that okay maybe CM Punk is staying, I still think it was a really well told match and everything. And I imagine CM Punk uh, actually winning may have come as a shock to a lot of people. I know as a kid I was shocked, but then again I was eleven. And a lot of stuff surprised me when I was eleven. But. Uh, Actually, actually, no, I hadn't turned 11 yet. I was 10 when this happened, because Money in the Bank is before September, so... Oh, yeah, I was I was actually 10 when this happened. But, um... Yeah, so... Oh, <laughs> anyway, got a little sidetracked there, but... Uh, yeah, so, it, was, it might have been a bit of a surprise to a lot of people. I do think it was the right move, because it generated buzz, and it was in Chicago. I can't imagine Cena would have been favored too well if he actually walked out of Chicago as WWE Champion. He probably would have been eaten alive, like, from the crowd. Obviously, verbally, not literally. He, at least, I hope. But, yeah, so Cena would have been hated. And just hated by the crowd if he walked out of Chicago as WWE Champion. So, I do think that part they got right, which is good. Uh, in terms of what I didn't really like about the match, um, it, and again, this stuff is kind of nitpicky for the most part. Uh, for starters, the commentary. Honestly, now I mentioned before, I think it was in uh, when I reviewed Halloween Havoc 97, uh, Eddie Guerrero vs. Rey Mysterio, which if you haven't already, go check out that video. But um, I think I brought this up in that video where the commentary usually will be either a non-factor at best or like annoying as at worst and sadly the commentary was pretty annoying they spent a lot of time arguing with each other they at least talked about john cena versus cm punk so they were at least on topic which i'll give them credit for that but it was pretty annoying after a while just to see them uh uh, arguing with each other and uh bickering pretty much now there were some legitimate points how uh, Jerry was saying, like, CM Punk, why, why does he want to leave with the title? He'll just, like, be out of a job by the end of the day, and he'll be walking out with the title. It was crazy. And Michael Cole was saying how there's so much pressure on John. He's pretty much got to uh, hold the title, which, yeah, in kayfabe makes sense. And Booker T, who kind of echoed some of both sentiments, but also was doing Booker T stuff, which is not a bad thing, but... Uh, yeah, they did bring up some good points, but it was kind of annoying. I can't lie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so there was that. And then um, the fact that, like, Del Rio, which I, I, get, I get this. Okay, I, I kind of get what's going on. So Alberto Del Rio oh, came out. Vince McMahon called him out to try cash in. And then CM Punk, like, kicked him. And then Del Rio didn't get to cash in. It makes sense in a story perspective of like uh, Del Rio coming out because he's money in the bank. He's Mr. Money in the Bank. He won it earlier on in the night, and Big Man called him out to cash in on Punk because uh, uh, it was pretty much like a last resort to try to keep the title in WWE. But Punk kind of kicked him. It it was kind of I get it like from the storytelling perspective, but at the same time, it's like kind of what's the point if he's just gonna get kicked. Uh, funnily enough, because uh, when CM Punk came back, they did the whole champion versus champion thing with him and John Cena, and CM Punk would end up winning that and being like the true W champion. Alberto Rio would end up cashing in anyway on uh, Punk, and so it kind of made this one feel kind of pointless, like Del Rio uh, winning Money in the Bank and then just coming out to try cash in just to be kicked, kicked by uh, uh, CM Punk here so oh yeah that was kind of pointless but at the same time I, I do get it but uh like i said that's kind of nitpicky uh 
Uh, yeah, that, that's can I do it for this review. Uh, like I said, for the most part, really solid match, but the story is what really uh, brings it to the forefront and makes it a really solid match. But uh, that is going to do it for this review. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about my review and if you've watched this match, what you think about this match. And uh, yeah, so we got some other stuff we're doing this week. Uh, tomorrow's going to be the next crime analysis video, and that's going to be for Mr. John Lennon. And then Friday is going to be my review of Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi as we wrap up the original Star Wars trilogy. And then from there, we're going to do obviously episodes one, two, three, and then uh, you know the sequels and everything and the spinoffs. Uh, uh, so. We're going to be doing that, and then System Shock Radio and Tesla Labyrinth are going to be coming this week as well, and these are going to be the live weeks, so it's going to be Saturday night and then Sunday afternoon, so uh, stay tuned for that. For System Shock Radio, we're doing the uh, PlayStation versus Xbox debate, so uh, you guys won't want to miss that, and uh, there is going to be a change to how I do System Shock Radio and Tales from the Labyrinth, but that but we will cross that bridge when we come to it but in the meantime thank you all so much for watching and i will see you guys later peace